Howdy folks, John here. In today's DIY video, we're going to be mounting one of these manual tire changers to the garage floor. Now, if you don't know what much about these things, they're very popular. Uh, you can pick them up pretty cheap. Down in the States, Harbor Freight has them for around 60 bucks, I think. Up here in Canada, they're about double the price. Princess Auto has them. I got this one from Amazon. And uh, regardless of where you get them from, the design is basically the same. You know, they've got this center post that's uh, mounted to this cross brace. That's what you bolt to your floor. There's a plate on it that the wheel sits on. And then there's a threaded bar that you screw down. That holds the wheel to the plate. And the idea is you just get a tire iron then, get it under the bead, walk it around the wheel to pop the bead off. Speaking of beads, there's also a bead breaker on the side of these things. You know, there's slight uh, dimension differences in this center pipe tube. Now this one, I've got an adapter. Uh, it's called a duckbill mod or duckbill adapter. You get these separately. This just allows you to safely do alloy wheels. You know, walking the tire iron around is fine for steel, but you certainly are going to scratch an alloy doing it with that. That's why if you're going to do alloys, you need one of these rascals. And this uses the same type of duckbill dismounting nylon foot that the full-size tire machines use. Uh, but instead of the wheel rotating around the duckbill, we're going to be rotating the duckbill around the wheel to uh, dismount the tire. And the primary reason I wanted this is we live out in a remote area. Finding a tire shop, one that won't scratch the wheels, is getting hard. And even looking at this side size, the one tire shop here, they won't even look at it. It's a 235-45R20, so fairly low profile. He doesn't even want to do them. And, uh, you know, even driving to the city with wheels and tires in tow, 300 kilometers one way, it's a crapshoot. I've had them scratch my wheels. There's just no care anymore. And, uh, you know, in true DIY fashion, that's why we do stuff like this. We can take our time, do it properly, and hopefully do a better job. I don't know yet. <laughs> I've never used it. But uh, we got to get this thing mounted to the floor first. Now we're just in a standard two-car garage here and I want lots of room to work around this thing so I'm basically taking up a car bay. Uh, and for that reason, I don't want this permanently mounted. I've got to be able to, you know, remove it when I'm not using it. So I'm going to be using threaded inserts into the concrete floor and uh, that way I can just unscrew it and store this when it's not being used. There is a problem, however. It's not just as simple. Why would it be as screwing holes into the floor? We've got hydronic heating in this garage, and with my luck, there's four holes I've got to drill. I guarantee you two would go through a hydronic line. However, I've got an idea that will hopefully work. Now, if you don't have a hydronic floor that you're dealing with, you can just skip ahead to the next time chapter. But if you do have a hydronic floor and you need to drill into it, what I've using here to find the lines is one of these thermal imaging cameras so I can see exactly where the uh, lines are. So I'm going to position the tire machine so the mounting holes are hopefully lining up between the uh, hydronic pipe and the floor. Thought another test I better do is check the pressure of the hydronic system in the off chance and it drops substantially after I drill the holes. So now that I've got it positioned, hopefully where these holes are not going to be going through any hydronic lines, I'm just going to mark each hole location with a punch. Before drilling the holes, just thought I'd uh, show what uh, anchors I'm going to be using. These are called drop-in anchors or female concrete anchors and they've got the threaded inserts on the inside and the way these work uh, they're just threaded in the top portion so there's not too many threads that the screw or bolt will bite into but uh, the bottom half has got this knurled section hopefully that's focusing there we go and there's these splits along here and there's a little expansion plug in there that when you drive it down it will flare this lower portion out to grab into your concrete hole and you use this setting tool that uh, sets that little insert 
to the right depth. Now these are stainless, you can get them in just regular galvanized steel, but I thought because this is in a garage where there's often going to be water and even uh, maybe a little bit of salt from road salt, uh, should get some stainless steel ones. And for drilling our holes, these are 3 8 inserts, so we need a half inch drill. And I'm using one of these Milwaukee four cutter carbide uh, concrete bits. And these not only center really nice, I've used these before, but they will go through rebar. So I've got a piece of tape around the drill bit just to mark my drill height. I just want the threaded inserts pretty much flush with the top of the concrete. I'll probably 3D print a little uh, plug to put in them when they're not in use so water and dirt can't get in them. So these, these three holes here, there's the other one right there, these are the ones I'm most worried about. There's a hydronic pipe supposedly right about here and one here running this way. This one we've got lots of room, there's a pipe here and a pipe quite a ways on the other side. So I'm going to start with this hole first, just got the vacuum out, and we'll suck up the dust. Call coming through the hole. That's a good sign. I should mention I'm using a hammer drill. You don't have to, but it just goes so much quicker. You know, I've used masonry bits with, with regular drills before and it takes forever and it really dulls the tips down quick too on a regular drill. Okay, in goes our insert. I just want it sitting a little bit below the surface. And now we'll get our setting tool. Jeez. Well, oh, feels good and secure. What I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to put some epoxy around the outside, obviously keeping it out of the threads, just to make sure no water can get between the insert and the hole. I should mention this concrete is uh, 15 years old, or no, 17. This just goes through it like a hot knife through butter. Back at the old boiler. Well, I guess we didn't go through a line. Oh, pressure's over. Never goddamn fails. Couldn't figure out why that last hole was getting so hard to drill. The cutting tit end came right off. That's why we pay the big money for Milwaukee. Shit. Wow, those tighten nice. Ugh. I don't think she's going anywhere. So like I said, this is part one, just mounting this uh, little manual changer. And in part two, we'll uh, try to bust the bead off and remove the tire on that big alloy. Until then, thanks for watching folks. Happy manual tire changer install. And if you get a Milwaukee bit, hopefully the tip end doesn't come off.